Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have Wild Turkey, yes, rare and exotic, 13 year old travel edition or travel exclusive. Look at this. Is this not great? 43% father and son, a Jimmy Russell dad, Eddie Russell's son, with over 100 years combined um, experience in the industry. And it's a one liter bottle here. Look at this puppy. Now this is, this bottle must have a story to tell because it ended up in an online shop over here in Germany called whiskey.de. Maybe you remember Horst, the guy who swished his whiskey around a lot in his mouth. And um, <laughs> I paid 85 euros for this, which is I thought a lot of money for a 43% um, bourbon whiskey. Wild Turkey, by the way, 13 years old. Oh, I almost was. I thought about it for like 10 or 20 minutes and I was like, okay, there's enough people in Germany that have never had something like this. So let's try this. I have had the Wild Turkey 13 year old. I have, I think I had like two bottles in so far of it that were actually thought of or earmarked for the um, Japanese markets. Um, now this was actually earmarked and that is the weirdest part about this bottle for me. This is for um, Australia. It says so actually on here. Um, supplied for Campari. Campari owns Wild Turkey. Australia. So I have a North Sydney address here and it's actually consumer um, inquiries in um, um, Australia. And New Zealand, we have www.wildturkeycampari. Oh wow, my eyes! We have wild. Um, where was it? Give us again. A, it says here wildturkeybourbon.com.au. AU is Australia. I have a bourbon that was originally meant for Australia, so rare and exotic. I have a second bourbon also, which is going to be my next video. This is the Kentucky Spirit, also one liter travel retail. So I'll talk about that in the next video though. All right, so um, this is one of the advantages of COVID at the moment is we didn't have much travel exclusives. And so what happened is with the, some of these travel exclusives were actually bottled, so what did they do? Well, we can't sell them to the airport because no one's at the airport, so let's put them into an online shop someplace. And for some reason, they ended up by whiskey.de here in Germany. Yay. Sold out fairly quickly, by the way. So I'm gonna compare this to an Eagle Rare. Eagle Rare, 10 year old, 45%. Why? Um, because I haven't had Eagle Rare in my glass for quite a while. And every time someone asks me over here in Germany, which, which, which bourbon can you recommend at a good price? I say Wild Turkey 101, which will be my comparison with the Kentucky Spirit, which is also 101 proof. And then I also mentioned Eagle Rare. And so I thought, hey, it's like time that I have this bottle at least a once here on my show so I can show how good that bottle is. Now this is 85 euros. This is a one liter bottle. At the moment, I can get two of these. All right, for the price that I would pay for one of these. Yes, it is a one liter bottle, but even if I took it down to um, 0 0.7, I still get two of these for the price of one of these at 0 0.7 liters, all right, or 700 milliliters. All right, good, very, very good. Um, the, the color is for my um, not professional eye. Uh, the Eagle Rare looks a tiny, tiny, tiny bat tad um, darker for me but I can live with both of these. 10 years old, 13 years old, 45%, 90 proof, 43%, uh, um, 86 proof. What in all the world were they thinking about sending out a 13 year old, 86 proof, 43% whiskey over to Australia? Why isn't it at least 101 proof like a wild turkey always likes to have it? Mm, I'll give you an answer in a second. So it says here, located deep in Kentucky, the Wild Turkey Distillery, distillery is, lo is situated along the Kentucky River. Come on, I've been there, but it's really great. It's a wonderful, wonderful place. You have this nice little valley there. There's a bridge that goes over there. You go down past the distillery. You can actually watch people. When I was there, they were bungee jumping a few years ago, but that's all okay. And it says here, the Kentucky River providing the distillery with limestone filtered water that is vital to making such a high quality bourbon. Compared to most bourbon, wild turkey um, is put into new oak barrels every 
green bourbon is put in their new charred oak barrels. All right, so um, with the deepest char available. Yes, they use the alligator char, char number five. I'm sorry, number four. Many use three or two. That's the main difference by wild turkey. Second difference I'll talk about in a second. So this imparts a spicy flavor and deep amber cover, color to the whiskey, um, making our liquid distinctively bold. Yeah. So this limited edition rare 13-year-old bourbon has been born from a unique collaboration of father and son master distillers, Jimmy and Eddie Russell. Together, these two have over 100 years of combined experience making high-quality bourbon, a true dedication to this artisanal craft. Eddie, or Jimmy and Eddie are the only active father and son uh, duo of bourbon master distillers in the world. Well, bourbon can only be made in America. So saying it's of the world, I think, is a little redundant. But that's my personal opinion, all right? Um, sorry, that's the way I just see it. It's just like, hey. All right, so um, another thing that makes wild turkey for me always interesting is their barrel entry proof. Now, legally, they can take it up to 125 proof. Um, that's the maximum here. That's 62.5 um, ABV. And what wild turkey used to do was 107 proof. So it's... Um, that would actually be 53.5%. Um, and then they moved up to 110 proof. Um, that was 55 ABV. And now they're actually at 115. All right. So 107.5 um, um, proof. Now, why? There's basically three reasons I can think of. Number one, you save money. Uh, four percentage proof, 4% um, means if you fill up 100 barrels, you have to fill up 104 barrels if you have a lower entry proof. So it's money and space. Rule number two, the second reason is also um, it's money and space. And now the second reason is taste. All right. So if you have um, a low entry barrel proof, you're actually having more water in the barrel and less alcohol. And so you're actually pulling out different compounds from the cask than you were if you had a very, very high alcohol and less water in there. All right, and that actually affects the flavor as well. And that's probably the third part. It's not just the wood components that are actually taken out of the barrel, but actually how much water do we need to add to the whiskey to actually dilute it down to 101 to 43 percent. The lower the entry barrel proof is, or the entry proof for the barrel, the less water we need afterwards. And so actually it can help a whiskey to have a much, much better flavor and less of a watery type of moment. So we have the price and the, the, the money and the storage capacity. We have the different products that are taken out of the wood of the barrel. And third, we have less water added later on to pull it down to our barrel or our bottle, um, bottle strength. All right, very, very good. So let's try this. I get some nice, it's a little bit, it doesn't pop as I was expecting it to, to be honest. So coat the glass here and see what happens. Okay, a little bit more of the alcohol comes through. Um, I get some brown sugar. I get some dark um, nougat, 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 nougat. Um, very, very soft white, uh, sorry, soft um, milk chocolate moment. And I get some dark plum with a little bit of brown sugar on top of this. This is actually very interesting and nice. So I have not read the tasting notes yet. I'm going to do that. I forgot to do it actually in my video beforehand in German. Oh, I like my Eagle Rare. Oh. This has a more intensive, more... Sh it's more of a nutty moment that comes through here. There's more of a pecan moment. And it's actually a tiny, tiny little bit more of a woodiness in here than I actually got from the 13-year-old. Wow. So let's try it. What surprised me is what's going to happen next year. Slanche. Enjoy. That's what we say in Scotland. So I'm going to say cheers to your health. Mm. It's 43% and hot and 13 years old. How did they do that in all the world? Wow. <laughs> Um, it's not overly hot, but it drinks as if it was like 50 plus um, um, ABV. This is really hot stuff. And the first time I tried it, it was like, is that me? Am I, if I'm, am I, am I being a really wimp today? Um, uh, this was my, my control whiskey. I had this first. 
And I, mmm, yummy. And then I tried this, it was, wow, is that hot? And I tried this again, it was like, mmm, yummy. Not me. <laughs> this whiskey really has that peppery, spicy, alcohol sharpness in there. And um, what also happens a little bit is it dies down fairly quickly. I've had bourbons that have a much, much longer finish than this actually has. So it says here, um, notes of metal oak, rich vanilla, hints of pear, and a long spice finish brilliantly reveals the bold and distinctive character of this aged wild turkey bourbon. Travel exclusive. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Eddie. All right. So 13, of course, is a lucky number, especially in Asia. And um, yeah, that's the way things are. All right, would I buy this bottle again? No. Would I buy the other um, Wild Turkey 13 that I used to have? Yes. Am I, do I regret buying this bottle? Well, no, I get to share it with people, and sharing whiskey is half the fun. All right, um, but I would never pay 85 euros for something like this again. Now, I know the bourbon market is at the moment, the price is the 100 is the new 50, right? Um, and this is at 85, maybe for some of you, you know, 13 year old wild turkey, I'd pay $85 any day of the week. Good, good for you, good for you. And it's a one liter bottle on top of that. A thousand milliliters, go for it. But to be honest, I think you get two of the Eagle Rare for that same price. Or even, I think I get almost four, <laughs> three and a half at least of the wild turkey. Um, I think this is actually a liter bottle, isn't it? Now, this is a one liter bottle. I can get uh, more than three of these for this, um, and I would any day of the week. This is this is one of the go-to things that you can just drink and share with buddies and just have a good old time um, and not thinking about, oh, no, am I drinking $100 whiskey or not? All right. Um, very briefly, my Eagle Rare in comparison. Hmm. Hmm. A tiny little push of the alcohol towards the end. Mm, you know you're drinking bourbon. Much more of a lighter moment. Um, this has darker, um, darker chocolate and darker fruits in it. 13 years old in a cask. Very, very good. Um, this is a little bit lighter, a little bit um, more nuttiness in here. Very, very nice. Now, if I were to choose the two of these blind, I think I would definitely go for the Eagle Rare because that heat just turns me off. I've watered this down way below 40%, and even towards the end, there's still that kick of that heat, of that spirit, of that of that sharpness of the alcohol there. So this is not a great product, in my opinion. Um, I am still going to give this a C+. C++, maybe a B- minus. minus. All right, so um, let's go for a C+, plus over here. Value for money, actually, in my book, it's a D+. Plus. All right, it's uh, maybe a C minus minus D plus plus, but right at that border. It's like, this is not something you need to buy. Now, if you are a bourbon collector and you have tried all the bourbon under the sun that comes from Kentucky and you have never seen a 13-year-old wild turkey and you want to try it, go for it. Go for it. Hey, buy, try, have a bottle at the bar, go to Australia or to Germany and find someone who has it. Enjoy. But to actually just have this um, instead of something else that you would have much rather preferred buying, go for that something else. Personal opinion. Thank you very much. My question of the day is, what is your favorite bourbon with an age statement? 13, 10. All right. So many of the bourbons have lost age statements. Some are coming back. Knob Creek has a one again. We only have the nine-year-old at the moment over here in Europe, at least in Germany. So let's see what happens in the future. Thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe, tell others. And thank you very much for subscribing and also sharing this video with others. Who knows? Maybe someone might, might come to Germany and find an Eagle Rare 13 one day that was emerg originally meant for Australia. Crazy, crazy world. Bye.